Hey there guys, welcome back. My name's Dawn and I garden in zone 8B. If you're new here, I'm grateful you're here. And if you're returning, thank you for coming back. It is the middle of June and it is, I think a scorching 99 degrees today. So summer is here, the garden is in full bloom and we haven't reached triple digits yet. So it's the perfect time to take you around and show you everything that's still looking great. Uh, this is such an exciting time for me in my garden not just because things are in bloom but because things haven't started scorching <laughs> so anyways i had a few new projects this spring so i'm excited to show you how those are developing so all right stay tuned all right guys you can see here my drift roses are on their second flush just looking glorious vibrant pink colors and should get a third flush so they are one of the top performers in my garden that's why I have them all over my yard and then this is a um, creamy white and yellow lantana that I love how right now it's just forming a beautiful little mound it's perfect in front of the drift rows and then if we go over here the liatris are putting on a full show look at the gorgeousness that these are so they do like to fall over and I have not done a good job of staking them, but I kind of like the form that they take and I'm okay with it. So unless they absolutely just start falling onto the ground, I'm just gonna leave them just like this. So, all right, now let's come back here. We'll come around and my plumeria is in full bloom. So I don't know if you guys remember the story, but we had a uh, greenhouse freeze last year I keep a heater in our greenhouse and the power went out one night and the greenhouse froze and I thought I lost my plumeria tree this is about a friend gave this to me I want to say it's about seven to ten years old it was massive guys it was so big you can look at maybe some of my previous videos and um, I thought we had lost it so um, what I did was I just cut it all back stuck it in the dirt and it's coming back beautifully for me. So what's interesting is it's coming back all white and previously it was a bunch of different colors. So I remember reading somewhere that it depends on what month that you take the cutting and plant it that the color of your juniper is gonna be. So I may cut off one of these limbs and plant it and then see what color it comes out to be. I think it'd be an interesting experiment. So, all right, now if I, you step down here, I have down here some verbena i will put the name on the screen because guys i honestly am just cannot keep track of all the names so but it's a beautiful multicolored pink and white verbena and then i have the proven winners um blue days or blue by heaven i think it's called and then my gorgeous gorgeous orange rose and this one is on its second flush so i love this a little pop of coral all right and then obviously my black eyed daisies doing beautifully and then above that is my white swan cone flower that is just so fun I do love it and I mean this this has been putting on a show like this for probably six weeks now. I mean, look at that. And I can't get myself to take cuttings. I've been making bouquets with so many things, but I just cannot get myself to cut these. Um, and then over here, my um, John Flinnick Fox, Fox is coming in beautifully. It's gonna put on a amazing show right here. Um, and then I don't know, let me see if I need to come around. All right, so if we go back here, you can see my incredible hydrangea way back there, just looking glorious. Um, I have my lesser catmint here. Sweet, sweet little white flowers, and it is just starting to bloom, but it's gonna fill out this entire area. Uh, this is Germander. This is a Texas native. It's a pretty little flower, but it stays nice and neat looking, which I, I like, because everything up in here kind of grows a little wild, so. Um, I've got my beautiful blue salvia bush here. And then this is a very silver light foliage phlox, which I love. 
Um, this is a new addition to this garden this year. I fell in love with this silver foliage and thought it would look fantastic uh, in this little section. So I have the um, butterfly weed is starting to come up. Uh, not, looks like maybe we're getting close to putting on some blooms. This is gonna be my Yarrow's second flush. And instead of standing straight up, they're just flopping. So I'm, I cut them back. I'm hoping to get a little bit stronger of a plant. Um, it was a little bit too much rain for Yarrow this year, I believe for sure. But the little pink blooms that are on there are just so cute. And then look at the ajugas just gone wild down there, spreading nicely below my Arizona slippers here. And then what would you guys do? Look what's coming through. My, my rose is poking through and I was thinking how gorgeous that would be. Oh, but it's just so risky. You know, I just don't want it to harm the tree. So I may let it bloom in the spring and then chop it. It's actually growing into a couple of places. So I haven't figured out what I would do. So y'all let me know, should I let it keep going and then just chop it in the spring? Or should I go ahead and chop it now and make sure it protects the tree? And the star of the show here is this gorgeous, gorgeous Rebecca. Look how big, let me see if I can find. See, this is where I should be trimming them off, but guys, I just love them so much. Let me show how big these blooms are. Almost look like sunflowers, they're so massive. It's such a beautiful plant. All right, and let me back up onto this side. And this is my Walker's Low Cat's Mint that I love the um, sweet little delicate blue flower. And I also love the silvery foliage of the Walker's Low. So this is, and again, um, it's just spreading throughout my garden and I love it. It's starting to put up volunteers all in my sidewalk and I'm just leaving them. So you can see all up in here is new and the wall is way under here. So I love it. And then my coneflower here has been suffering, I think, from rust. Last year at this time, it was so full of blooms. And so I have been adding some neem oil, do you see? And they, they almost feel like sandpaper. So I've been spraying it with neem. Um, it would make sense that rust would be happening just because of all the rain we've gotten. And I'm hoping that the new foliage is looking really healthy, so I'm hoping to just keep it keep it going and I see a couple of blooms on there. Oh, actually two, three or four blooms. But yeah, this last year was just full of beautiful pinkish, pinkish purple blooms. That's Echinacea purpurea. Right, and then here we have the beautiful proven winners, Supertunia vesifusha, growing in with this gorgeous southern living grass. I love the combination. Let me come around so you can see the front. Because it's so pretty with the Rebecca behind it. And I think my Supertunias are a little bit on the way out. Um, it's just starting to heat up too much. It's starting to heat up too much for them. And this is kind of when they start to fizzle out. All right, let me back up. You know, I always forget to mention, because I just take it for granted that everyone knows what they are, but so many people asked about the sunshine legustrums back there. One, two, three, that's what they are. They are vibrant and beautiful. And you know, I'm coming back to this because I got a new little girl. Her bench has been broken for years, y'all, and her foot broke, she was just a mess but I couldn't bear to get rid of her. My mom gave this to me in our old house and we moved it here. And she's such a um, main figure in my garden. So I just couldn't bear to part with her, but we were driving home from my parents' house a few weekends ago and happened to just drive right next to a concrete pottery supplier. And there it was sitting there, I was so excited. Um, so we grabbed it 
And then I salvage my little girl, and I'll show you a little bit later. She's up on my hydrangea. So now I have two. The other one's just obviously not sitting on a bench since I only have one working bench now. All right, and then back up in here, these are all Echinacea purpureas as well. These are from seed um, just this year, so I'm not expecting much from them, but I just have a small little drift right here. Um, that is some glorious hostas. These are the, I think, gold, mine, gold mounds by Rias, which look pretty today, and they make cute, cute little pink flowers. Do you see them all over? But these crisp up in the summer, and I'm not always very pleased with them by the time August rolls around. But I do love the vibrant foliage for now. Okay. And then down in front, I have some blue evolvas all along the border for the earth. So pretty. So here is the gorgeous icicles, beautiful succulent, and I just have to bring it in in the winter. I love everything about it and it does super well in the heat. All right, again, so I have Blackfoot Daisy all along here and I'm, I'm letting it grow out into the sidewalk. I love it. My sidewalk is very charming, but I think it looks even more charming when the plants grow onto it. This is a beautiful, beautiful it's pot of gold or pot of honey. It's a Coreopsis that is so whimsical. And I got it many years ago and love everything about it. And it's one of those that when everything else in the summer is crisp, this is going strong and looking so fun and so cute. So coming a little bit further, the few snapdragons have a little bit of life left in them. Not much, but I'm hanging on for dear life. I put some zinnias down here to take their place. And these are pixie wixie crepe myrtles that I I am waiting patiently for blooms. I have three of them along here. One, two, three. And one of them was getting ready to bloom, but I cut it off because I really want, I really want it to fill in more. And they're looking a little bit scraggly. Here's some blooms right here. But I'm excited. I feel like it's gonna look like hydrangeas up here. Um, and then I've just got lots of hostas mixed in some hydrangeas, that's a tiny tough stuff, aha, uh -huh. hydrangea right there, and then just lots of hostas, and then I've got a gorgeous canna lily that this is a new addition that I have just give some height to this bed, this foliage is so gorgeous, and this is going to make an orange bloom, I have one in the, um, on my sidewalk, on the other side of the yard and, and just growing it for the foliage. I honestly don't even care about the bloom because it is so beautiful. Um, so just along here, just more hostas, impatience, um, some carex, some beautiful carex. And then this is just a gorgeous silver foliaged chrysanthemum. Can you guys see the back of these? See the back of the leaves almost white. And I'm growing it for the foliage because it is beautiful, but it makes a really cool pink, I'm sorry, yellow flower. I'm excited about that. So on this side is Augusta Lavender Heliotrope, a proven winner's variety that I got about a week ago. They were so leggy, but I was just so excited to find them. So I went ahead and cut them back because I want more of a bushier plant. Um, but it, uh, it came back and gave me blooms like the next day. So I'm super excited about those. They'll fill in here beautifully. And then this is my Santolino. Santolina, it's a type of lavender. And I have that throughout my garden just to add that, that silver foliage. And then just an update on my waterfall basket, looking beautiful. Let's see her. 
to more Rebecca. My oak leaf, look at it guys, from all the rain, just full of rust. But I'm not, I'm not gonna worry about it. It's too late to do anything about it. I mean, the blooms are so crispy. Those of you that garden in North Texas, can you let me know if your oak leaf crisps up like this very early? Is it that I'm not giving it enough water or is it just that it gets too hot too quickly? Can you let me know what yours is doing and if um, maybe mine is moisture related? Please let me know in the comments if you have the same experience. And it'll die back and come back fresh next year. But right now it just adds some interest so it is what it is all right catnips looking beautiful and graceful hostas I've got some lantana starting here more catmint alliums that never bloom my beautiful dragon wing begonias Okay, and then we circle around here. Let me just show y'all. Let me back up here and give a view. Spectacular. The sun is setting. Hopefully it's not. And then this is the beautiful Eclipse Hydrangea. It's performing so well. So far. Gorgeous, gorgeous blooms. And then that back there is my oak leaf trying to train into a tree, which is a never ending project. So I need to come in and cut those back. My hostas are all full. And then all throughout here, I've got little coleus from Baker Seeds. And then I just put them all up in here. It's going to fill this area in nicely. And I'll forget the variety, but I'll put it up on the screen. Very beautiful foliage. Peaches and pinks. All right, we come around. And my elderberry, I am so excited because this is year two. And it looks like it's going to do fine. And... I'm not sure if I'm gonna get any flowers off of it, but honestly, I'm just happy for the growth. I was a little bit concerned that I had lost it, but it has put on some very good growth for me. So I'm getting excited. By next year, I would expect it to absolutely just take off. So, Also my viburnum, I figured out what was going on because it was not doing well at all and it was root bound. I had put it in a pot. So I threw it in a grow bag because I didn't have a pot big enough and we're going to be redoing a few more beds in the back here this um, fall or spring but ever since I put it in that grow bag it has perked up thankfully so all along here alyssum with coleus intermixed so it's all going to spread in nicely and then since this coleus does have this really pretty peachy color I have a gorgeous gorgeous like peachy coral canna lily all right and then I've got my rock rose abelias and behind that the smoke bush and then all back there I have some peach drift roses that I have neglected y'all and they were full of spiromites so I came back sprayed them cut them back really good and they're looking a lot better. I'm still struggling. This is my Moonlight in Paris rose. This area used to get a lot more sun than it does now. Let me look up so you guys can see what's going on. We've got lots of trees up here. So it's they're getting morning sun and then they're getting just splashes of afternoon sun. And it's just not enough. So beautiful hanging basket. So pretty with begonia. This is a Gerbera daisy that had a bloom. And 
it fell off, or I cut it off. Little coleus in there. Smoke tree looking gorgeous. All right, so you can see my crepe myrtles are all coming into bloom, which is perfect timing because my roses are really struggling. With all of the rain that we got, the roses all had a really, really bad case of black spot that I was struggling to treat. So I wind up, since I had to replace one of my roses, I wind up just cutting most of them back instead of spraying constantly for the black spot. It's so much work. So that is looking sad. And anyway, moving on, mm -hmm. see how gorgeous that Jacqueline falls as she's filled in. And then we've got, let's see, these are a couple more coleus, a couple of more coleus from seed. Beautiful fuchsia color. This is the Echinacea purpurea. This is a beautiful container with blue skies, super tunia. Some gorgeous Angelonia back there and another coleus. And I planted a new climbing rose here. This is Polka, it's an heirloom rose. I can look, he has a little visitor down there. Perfect place to be. Anyway, she had a bloom. I'll put the bloom on the screen, but I'm excited for that to fill out here on our trellis. And then we have Bleeding Hearts Vine that it seems to be doing well. And all through here, I have this strawberry drop coleus that I've propagated all up in here just to fill this area. It's a beautiful, beautiful coleus. Beautiful crepe myrtle. Here's that canna lily. Insane. This is purple skull cap. Love the mound. My Mexican mint marigold. Love it. Blanket flower still coming along very nicely. I hate that this ivy's tucked away back here. And then Moonlight and Pear. And then this is a hibiscus that we overwintered in the greenhouse that has not put out any blooms yet, but it's a peachy peachy bloom. Very pretty peachy bloom. and over to the sad side and I'm trying to keep my cool here as I explain that right there is the new heirloom rose because my roses went to rootstock so what was a row of sexy Rexy let me go over here go here and show you all these pretty little things. So what was a row of Sexy Rexy went down to rootstock and it gave me a red rose, which was a beautiful rose, but just did not look right when I have five roses here and the one in the middle was red. So those were awful black spot. That is a drainage canal right there. And with all of the torrential rains we got, those three could not recover from the black spot. So I cut them back at different times. You can see this one is flushing back very nicely. No black spot, so I'm thrilled about that. And then this one is starting to flush out. I cut this one back just about a week ago and I see some new growth, so. But in the meantime, I have a bunch of self-seeders all in the front here. 
I threw some or sowed some alyssum seed. I, you know, I always feel guilty when I say sowed because when I throw seed in, literally, that's how you get alyssum to grow. So I have alyssum all throughout here, and then I just planted some vinca just to fill this area until my roses catch up. I also am excited. I would like to have a bunch of self-seeding annuals on this side just so I don't have to fill up this bed every year. So this is Mystic Spires. I transplanted my Henry Dulberg to my front yard because it was self-seeding all over my bed, y'all. And Henry Dulberg is too big to be taking over my roses. So I dug it up, moved it to the front where it has more space and it can sell seed without problems. But I think that the Mystic Spires would do better. And then, and I'll take you into the vegetable garden in a second. Uh, in the meantime, we've got Autumn Joy Sedum. And then in between each of those is Rock and Grow Back in Black, which are new this year. And I think they got um, a little too much rain. Those seem to be struggling a lot more than the Autumn Joys. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna lose them or not, but they are not looking healthy. I had to prop them up with rocks because the stems almost rotted out, so. Burgundy, verbena, beautiful. And I love my hanging baskets this year on my greenhouse. So pretty. A little Carex in there with the cascading vincas. Creeping Jenny. Got Angela in here. Greenhouse is empty, so there's nothing to show you guys in there. Here is the new beds that I planted. And you can see my perfect storm was exploding and I'll try to come out in the morning and maybe get some new video because it was covered but you know they only last a day but look at that gorgeous foliage y'all oh spectacular so this is twilight zone I think this is play in the blues it's proven winner salvia And then at the base of our, we have a lemon and a lime tree that are looking pretty sad, but we've got some gorgeous petunias. The purple one is the, a wave petunia and the pink is the super tunia. Bubble gum. All right, let's go around to the veggie garden. So all along here is mint. I love mojitos. So we have mint all along here and then starts the creeping Jenny in the highest and theme. And then look, my Katrina Rose has one rose. <laughs> All right, so let's here in the veggie garden, we have okra here, looking very healthy. Lots of plebano peppers. You gotta come out here and harvest. Lots of plebano peppers. A little, these are little Rob, what type of tomatoes are these? Just cherry tomatoes? Are they certain type? Let's see. I want to say it's an eggplant. Let me see. Let me see if I can find a tag. No. Hey, Rob. What is this? Oh, can you guys see what's hiding down there? Look at that. Look at all those baby tomatoes, cherry tomatoes. We got to get out here. We've got a little blackberry vine. We've harvested most of it, y'all. Lots of chives. Oh, we've got a cucumbers. Look at this one, how crazy. We're growing him just for show. All right, and then here is my cutting garden. Some sunflowers are starting to open up. I've got lots of varieties going on. And I didn't label them. 
like I should have, obviously. I think these are, <clears throat> I do know these are Pro Cut Whites from Johnny's Seeds. All right, and then all of my, these are all Spun Sugar Celosias from, from Florette's Flowers. Just very soft pinks and oranges. Love them. Here's some more Celosia. Isn't it so fun? Love it. I'm doing some succession planting and that's what the grow bags are all about. So I think there's unicorn in one of them and then um, alpenglow in the other. But here are a few of the cute, cute, soft, soft pinks and peaches. Very pretty. So pretty. <clears throat> and then I also have a few in row bags because you just never have, have never have enough room for zinnias, right? Peas. And a lot of some they reseed, you know, every year in my garden. So when I see that, I just dig them up. Pretty sure this is a reseed from last year. Skating Vinca is so pretty. And white scavoldi. And then I see one bloom in my rose tree up here, looking gorgeous. All right, well, I still have so much more to show you guys, so please be sure to join me in the next one. I'm gonna split this video in two so that it's not a two hour video. So um, anyways, thank you guys for joining me. I hope that you'll join me in the next one. All right, have a great day, bye.